There's several different ways of creating panoramas from a GoPro camera and one of the ways I like to do it is to shoot video and then pull the images out of the video and then create a panorama from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do this in Lightroom and Photoshop. Now this is footage that I shot with my DJI Phantom, uh, the Phantom 2 quadcopter and I've been using a GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the steps now to put all of this together and create a nice looking panorama. So here we are, we're inside of Lightroom and I just simply clicked import. I found the card and then from the card I just imported it into Lightroom and I'm just going to save the effort of doing that and then what I did is I just pulled it into a collection. Or you could have just also go to wherever you imported it here inside of Lightroom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you, here's the video. So typically what you might see is you might see it close. So when you click on the video file, let me open this up here and we'll see, you know, here's our, our phantom video. We're inside the library. So if we look inside the library panel, I've got some photos that I bought in and we'll talk about those in a sec, but here's my video clip. You can scrub over this video or you can double click to open it. You can hit the play button here and this will play it. And you can also click and drag to scrub through this video. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to show you how to open it. We click this little gear icon and then this opens it up. And then you can see in here, there's our video. So we can scrub through this video. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a panorama. And I'm just going to get pretty close to where we shot the panorama. If I just hit play here, you can see what's happening is I've got my quadcopter here and I'm just kind of flying around. And then when I want to shoot a panorama, what I do is I'm just yawing around right now. And you can see just very, very slowly, smoothly, and gently. You don't need to stop in between the shots. Um, if you do that, then what's going to happen is the footage is not necessarily going to be usable. You might get some pictures that you can shoot. But honestly, if you're moving slowly like this, you're not going to get a lot of motion blur. It's not really going to be an issue. I'm also shooting at 2.7K on here. Uh, when I get my GoPro 4, I'm going to be doing the same thing at 4K. So right now you can see this is just straight out of the camera. And we're just kind of going around there. And as you can see, we've just done a complete 360 degree panorama. And we're back to where we started. So what do we need to do to get the images off of this? Well, what we do is we just simply start with one of the images that we want. We go down here and then we just simply choose capture frame. And then when we capture frame, what it does, let's go in here. There we go. There's an image right there. It's taken a full resolution image from this video and it's right there. So this is not even uh, a screen capture. You can see if I move in one to one here, it's full size. So uh, this is the best and cleanest way that I know to get a still frame out of a video. So let's go back to our video. And then what would we do, you know, when we were panning around, let me just go back to roundabout because we were pretty close about the nine minute mark. So what I do is I will take one of the shots, I'll click there, and then you can also hit these little buttons here to move backwards and forwards one frame at a time. So what I'll do a lot of the time is if I've got my first frame, say there, I, I like to do a a little bit more of an overlap than you normally would. Typically in a panorama, you're looking at 30%. In this case, I'm doing about a 50% because I'm going to lose some when I do lens correction. So I would go in here and I would just choose capture frame again. And then we're going to go forward. And you can see I'm just kind of scrubbing through this and then I'll capture the next frame. So that's one way of doing it. The other way you can do it is actually just start and, you know, just hit the play button and then just stop, capture a frame, hit the play button, let it go again until we've got, you know, some good stuff there. I'm thinking about here is looking good, but I noticed that lens flare started coming in about two frames ago. So I'm actually just going to just tap back a couple of frames just before that lens flare hits, which is going to be about exactly there. Then I would capture another frame. So as you can see, we're just kind of moving the camera around and then we're just capturing these frames as if we were there live, but we're doing it later on in Lightroom. So I'm going to double click. And you can see here's a couple of the frames that I've grabbed. But here's the frames that I grabbed earlier on so you don't have to sit there and watch me doing this. This is actually the final full 360 degree panorama you can see there. It's quite impressive. And we can zoom in. This is the one that's already been processed and everything like that. But let me go back. We're going to go back to actually our library module. I'm going to double click. And so you can see we've got these images. 
So what you would typically do is you would just select all the images that you want to use in your panorama and then continue. So here we go, we've got the boat there. And if I hold down the control key or the command key, I can select a few of these images and notice this is selecting the ones all off to the left side. Now I want to take the ones to the right side. So we're going to scroll down and then here's our boat here. And these are the ones you can see there from the right side that we've selected. Actually, let me just select these again. I'm just going to hold that down. So I've got those three there and then I'm going to scroll up to the top here and I'm going to grab these. So there we go. We've selected um, seven images right now. You would select all of them to do a 360, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to do the seven images and create a nice little panel here. So the next thing we have to do though, is we need to go into the develop module. Notice that the seven are selected, but we're only adjusting the one that's selected there. We're going to go down to lens correction. We're going to turn on enable lens correction GoPro and notice what this looks like before. And then after what that does is it gets rid of the distortion. So we're going to hit the sync and we want to sync everything on here. What we really want to actually sync is just a lens correction. So you could simply go down and you could do that um, under the lens correction here. We could do the profile collection. A lot of the time I just check all it's just as quick and then just hit synchronize. And then what it's doing is it's just copying that lens correction to all of those images. So all of those are now lens corrected. And now we're ready to bring them into Photoshop. So we go to photo. We go down to edit in and we go down to merge to panorama in Photoshop. Now, when we click this, we're just going to get this little warning. Sometimes when we're out of sync with our camera raw version, no big deal. And we're just going to actually open this up in Photoshop. Now we're done with Lightroom. We're going to do the rest of our workflow here in Photoshop. However, when we're finished, when we hit the save button, it's actually going to save that original back into Lightroom so we can manage that photograph from there if we want to. So let's have a look here. We've got the photo merge dialog boxes come up and then we're just going to choose the cylindrical because we're doing a cylindrical panorama. We're not doing a spherical, we're doing a cylindrical. All right, so we've got these selected. We're blending the images together and we're going to click OK. So now what it's going to do is it's actually going to attempt to align all of these photographs and put them together into one seamless panorama. And typically speaking, Photoshop does a good job of this. And you can see I shot this really early in the morning, so we've got just beautiful colors in here. These are looking really great. I didn't use a Protoon in this particular instance. A lot of the time when I'm shooting video, I do turn Protoon on. But in this case, I'm actually quite happy without using Protoon. Um, also makes these images here when you're working in there a little bit quicker. So here's our uh, progress bar here. You can see it's taking a little bit of time here because Photoshop really has to think quite hard about this, about aligning them, because it's not easy coming from a GoPro camera or a Phantom camera for that matter. OK, so here we go. We've uh, got them merged together and these are looking pretty good. You can see our panorama is, is quite nicely merged. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit, I want to merge all of these together. So I'm going to hit Control E or Command E to merge these. So now we've got them into one layer. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop these. Sometimes I do wide, ac wide angle um, correction, the adaptive wide angle. And I'll just show you where that is in case you want to do that. The adaptive wide angle, you'll go in here and you'll see some different options here with the panoramas working with with this option here and this is actually I've got I go through all of this on my uh, DVD that I'm done on the uh, DJI Phantom handbook uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to make a quick panorama here so I'm clicking the crop tool here and I'm going to go up and I want to crop the beginning about there and I'm going to take the opposite corner and I'm going to crop it into about here but I want some additional depth here because I, I don't want to cut this right off under there where we start to cut off the front of the boat. So you can see we've got little bits of corners and stuff in there that are not necessarily going to be um, perfect. So I'm just going to hit enter. I'm going to choose the delete cropped pixels, hit enter to crop. Now it's looking pretty good, but we've got some transparent areas here. We're going to fill those up. We're going to hit command or control and click on the thumbnail. Notice the selection is active. Now we want to invert that selection. So we go to select and we're going to choose inverse. Now what that does is everything that wasn't selected is now selected, which is the transparent areas. Those were the areas that were not selected. Now they are because we inversed it. However, it's right up to the edge. I want to kind of go into these a little bit. So we're kind of a little bit on the edge between the transparent and the pixels. 
So to do that, we're going to choose the select. We're going to use modify and we're going to expand that selection a little bit. So it's just going to make this selection just cover a little bit more ground. And I'm just going to grab 20 pixels and I'm going to apply OK. Notice now we've got a little bit of an overlap. And that's good. We wanted that overlap. So we can fill this now with content aware fill. So we're going to use shift delete or shift backspace if you're on Windows. And what we want to do is use the content aware option, normal. And if you're on CC, you're going to use the color adaptation. If you're not on CC, if you're on CS6, that option won't be available. So don't bother trying to find it because it won't be there. And then we're just going to make sure preserve transparency is off or it defeats the whole purpose of what we're doing. Click OK. And now Photoshop's going to think for a moment and look at that. Control D or Command D to deselect. And it's filled those corners in beautifully. And now we have a nice panorama. Now you might want to do some further processing on this in Camera Raw. In fact, we'll just touch on it just real quickly here. We're going to choose Filter and we're going to go to the Camera Raw filter. We're going to pop this open and I'm just going to do a couple of quick adjustments. Let's adjust the exposure a little bit, brighten it up. We're going to recover some of the highlights by pulling the highlight slider down. Open up some of the shadows just a little bit, not too much on here. And then notice we've got a little clipping, so we're going to fill in the blacks. So we're going to hit the Option key when we do this. And then when we do, we'll see these little areas appearing. That's the Alt key. And then we release, and this is these areas that are being forced to black. So this is giving us a nice little good bit of body in there. Might even take it a little further. Give it a little touch of clarity here. Not too much, just a little bit. And maybe a touch of vibrance. Not that it really needs it because it's actually looking quite colorful and vibrant right now. So we've made some just really, really basic adjustments here inside of Camera Raw. And we're going to click OK. And you'll see those adjustments before and after. It just kind of cleans it up, brightens it up quite a bit. And you can see if we zoom in here, let's look at this uh, before the adjustments and after the adjustments. So there we go. That's how we create a panorama from video using a GoPro and a DJI Phantom 2 quadcopter. For more information, check out PhotoshopCafe.com. Don't forget, subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube for more great tutorials every week. And also check out my DJI Phantom quadcopter video. It's a nine hour video that goes through everything that you need to know to fly, set up a quadcopter, shoot aerial photos and video, and then edit them inside of Photoshop and even uh, Crash Course and Premiere Pro and also the GoPro Studio. So it's pretty much an entire curriculum in, in a box and you can get that as a DVD or a digital download from Photoshop Cafe. So thanks for watching. Add a comment below if you get stuck. I'd be happy to answer your questions. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.